The COVID-19 pandemic has created a lot of uncertainty all across the world. People have got no idea what comes next, when it's going to be over, and how many more people are going to die. However, there is one group of people that has got a certainty, that are predicting the future. That's right, lawyers are preparing themselves for the absolute surge of divorce cases that are bound to come through once the global pandemic is over. Hi guys, Jay Newts here. I hope that you're staying sane and safe during this global pandemic, and I also hope that none of your loved ones have suffered too much through this catastrophe. Now before we start today's video, do me a favour, do yourself a favour actually, and click that subscribe button just down there, and ring the notification bell so that you are notified every single time that either myself, Mick or Milton put out content. As I said last time, we are aiming to build up to 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2020, which means we would love to have you as one of our valued subscribers. Alright, enough of the promotion, let's get into today's video subject, shall we? Which of course is the COVID-19 divorce pandemic, because that is really the second pandemic. We've got the health pandemic, and what's going to happen after is there's going to be, naturally, a surge of divorces, or if people aren't married, relationships will break up. People always do say that most marriages these days end in divorce, and sadly, that is true. Statistics show that 30% of all first-time marriages end in divorce, and a staggering 60% of second or third-time marriages also end in divorce. The trend there is the more times you get married, the higher the chances are of you getting divorced, which clearly shows that people didn't learn the first time. And if you're very smart, you say to yourself, I'm not even going to get married once. Now those percentages are quite high, however in 2019 we saw a spike because a staggering 40-50% to 50 of all first time marriages in 2019 ended in divorce. Which begs the question, 2020 we are seeing a global pandemic where we are forced to self isolate, we are forced to social distance and we are forced to stay home, which means staying at home with our husband or our wife or our partner, or our fiancé, our boyfriend, our girlfriend, or whatever. And that is bound to create some tension. Whilst there are people out there that might actually reconnect through this pandemic and this lockdown, there are many others who will probably actually find that the person they are with is somebody that they actually don't love, and quite frankly, can't stand. Now of course, when you get married, you are legally bound together. Of course, if you're in a de facto relationship and living together for a certain amount of time, you basically have got the same rights, or you haven't got the same rights, as people who are married anyway, in the eyes of the law, which is fucked up. I mean, seriously, the lawmakers, the politicians, come on, let's get real here. If you're not married, you're not married. You shouldn't have all these separation rules and laws if you're in a de facto relationship. Let's face it, if you're in a relationship with somebody and you're living with them for three or six months, and then you split up, the other person is legally entitled to half, in some cases, of all of your shit. It's exactly the same as marriage. In fact, a friend of mine got married several years ago, and I saw his marriage certificate on the wall after they came back from their honeymoon, and I said to him, so how does it feel now to be married? Do you feel a, an, you know, an uplifted connection to your significant other? Have you reached a spiritual enlightenment? Have you hit a wonderful sexual peak where your bodies become one and you've hit some form of Buddhist enlightenment? Is that what marriage is about? And he went, fuck no. Legally, she just owns my ass. So you have to pay to get married, and then of course you have to pay to get divorced. Now I'm sure that there are many of you out there who are watching this who are married, or who are engaged, and I congratulate you, and I admire you, I really do. I'm not the marrying type. I've got nothing against marriage, it's just, um, well, the thought of having sex with only one person for the rest of my life. I don't know. See, I was in the UK a little while ago, and I heard the best saying of my life in the UK. This man said to me, you know, when there's always biscuits in the tin, son, where's the chopping fun in biscuits? And you can't argue with that logic, can you? And I thought to myself, yeah, well, well that, makes, that makes sense, you know, because, I mean, for example, I love chocolate chip cookies, right? I love them. But I know that if I had to eat chocolate chip cookies every single day for the rest of my life, I'm fairly sure that after a while, I'd love to fuck somebody else. I digress. Back to the subject. We know that there is going to be a surge of breakups happening across the world because we have already seen that in China. That's right, China seemed to be leading the way through this entire pandemic. They're the ones who get the pandemic first. They're the ones who are in lockdown first. And they're also the country who are starting to report the divorce rate surge first. That's right. Unfortunately, it shows that during this global pandemic, not everybody is feeling the love while stuck at home with their significant others. In fact, lawyers are seeing a 25% increase 
in people filing for divorce. Now naturally, if people are wanting to get divorced from their marriage, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to want to end their relationships in general because being stuck at home with your significant other will teach you one of two things. It will either bring you together as a couple, make you stronger and realize what the quality was in that person that made you fall in love with them and want to be with them for the rest of your life. So this period of time could be a good thing to have that wonderful reconnection and reaffirm your love. And for those people, Fuck off. I, I really hate you. I really do. No, I'm joking. Look, if, if you are experiencing that, then well done. I'm very happy that you have reconnected with your significant other. But unfortunately, there are a lot of other people who right now are stuck in lockdown all across the world. Australia, the UK, New Zealand, America, China, wherever, where they are realising that I can't fucking stand you anymore. And I can't wait to get out of quarantine. In fact, I'm quite surprised that it's only the divorce rate that's going up and not the murder rate. Because let's face it, we've seen lots of movies where people have literally become so frustrated with their significant other that they have resorted to the ultimate relationship breakup, which of course is death. And it starts off small, I'm sure. One day, you can be innocently having cereals in the kitchen. Just monotonously eating your cereals with a spoon. And you could just pause and look at that spoon and you could think, I could kill her with that. And that's where it starts. That's where you know you're going batshit crazy. So this time in our history could be the worst time for relationships. Now I innocently put this on Facebook a little while ago saying it would be very interesting to see how many relationships break up because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And the response I got was almost a bit of an attack. I had people saying, well, that's being positive, isn't it? Well, let's think about this logically, shall we? If you are in a relationship that you hate, or if you are finding that you actually don't want to be with the person anymore because you don't love them or they irritate you or you just really can't stand another moment with that person then having that affirmation, having that epiphany is actually a very positive thing for that individual because you have finally worked out what you want and what you don't want. So yes, it is a positive. You can always turn every bad thing in a positive way. That's what they say and this is just one of those cases. So yes, that is a positive thing. So I don't understand why people are whinging. Maybe you're actually scared yourself. Maybe you're scared that your partner will walk out on you. And if that's the case, maybe you should be spending this time to basically think to yourself, wow, I could reassess how I am in my relationship. For example, if you are a person who's a bit of an asshole or who's very controlling, you might want to start to change your ways because this is the perfect time in history where your partner will think to themselves, I'm really sick and tired of putting up with all that shit. I'm gonna leave. So if you've got a partner like that, if you are an arsehole, a controlling person, a nagging wife, an abusive husband, or whatever the case may be, this could be the perfect time for you to change your ways to hold on to the person that you're with if you wanna be with them. Otherwise, guess what? You are heading for the breaker's yard. You are heading for the divorce courts. And if you think marriage is expensive, well, let's face it, divorce is just as expensive. Because if marriage is grand, well then divorce is 10 grand. Work that one out. They're saying, of course, that COVID-19 is a killer virus. And yes, of course, it is a killer virus. However, it's not just killing people physically, it's killing relationships as well. And unfortunately, that is just a part of this pandemic. It is a part of human life. And I think that people are realizing that human beings are not monogamous creatures. And I've been saying this to people for years. The church would have us believe that we are meant to find one person and stay with that one person, whether they are the love of our lives or not. You must be with one person and if you stray, you are awful. You are a sinner and you are going to hell. Let me put this this way. Human beings are not monogamous creatures. There is a reason why you have had multiple partners in the past before settling on the person you are currently with. If we were meant to have only one person, we would have only found one person and that would be the end of it. But no, there is a reason why we are walking down the street or on a bus or in a nightclub or a restaurant and we see somebody attractive and we think to ourselves, I'd like to fuck that person. Hmm. We find other people attractive, whether that be physically or sexually, because human beings are not monogamous. In fact, I think there are only five species in the world, I could be wrong, but I believe there's only five species in the world of animals that actually are monogamous, but human beings are not monogamous creatures, and we should stop thinking that we are. So we should actually see this divorce pandemic as a good thing, because 
you know what, why not have the variety of life? Why not go after a different person? These days, let's face it, we are living in different times now where we are far less judgmental and far more open-minded. So perhaps as a woman, you're sick and tired of being with a man and you'd like to experience a lesbian relationship. Or you'd like to go one step further and you go, well, I still like men, I still prefer cock, so I'll try something a little bit more poly, a little bit more open. Why not bring another person in, whether that be another man or another woman? So this could actually be a good time in our lives Separation can be seen two ways, let's be honest. Separation can be seen as something that is absolutely heartbreaking if that person is the love of your life and you lose them. It is very heartbreaking, it's hurtful, it's an emotional drain on the body, and yes, that is unfortunate. And I'm sure there are people who are going to go through that and experience that because of this whole lockdown. However, breakups are also a good thing. It makes you realize that, you know what, yes, I've had some fun and there's new people out there. So divorce isn't such a bad thing. Divorce is a celebration. And when I say divorce, I don't just mean marriages. Let's just say divorce in relationships in general, because you can look at it as, wow, we had such a fantastic time and I really cherish that. And I'm now looking forward to the next chapter, the next person, the next relationship. If you want to have multiple partners in your life, there is nothing wrong with multiple partners. Be open about it, of course. Don't be an arsehole and go behind your partner's back, but be open to the fact that you are allowed to experience more than one person. Now, I'm sure I painted a picture here of doom and gloom for relationships and everyone's going to break up. No, of course, everybody is not going to break up. In fact, I think that, as I said before, two things could happen. If you live with your significant other person, this could actually make you stronger as a couple. You can reignite that flame and realize what it was that brought you both together and made you fall in love with each other. And if that happens to you, that's very beautiful. And there's other relationships, of course, that could survive this pandemic. For example, if you do not live with your partner, then you've probably got a higher chance of staying together. And you never know, this pandemic might actually bring you together into a marriage where if it's your first time, you could be divorced if you fall into that 30% or your second time, 60% or more. And if you love your partner, then stay married, stay together. In fact, renew your marriage vows. There's nothing wrong with that. People do it all the time. So you can see that this part of our history could be definitely seen as a good thing. And as I said in one of my previous videos, if we look back to my COVID-19 sex ban video, I'll link it up there or I'll put it at the end of the video so you can at least watch it if you haven't already. I believe that at the end of this pandemic, we should all get together and do what the Belgians do and indulge in some group sexual activity to celebrate not only life and the end of the pandemic, but go, look at this, there's so many other people out there. Look at all these other people I can be with. Remember, not monogamous. If you've got a problem with the fact that I don't believe that people are monogamous, deal with it. Just deal with it. You know what? I know for a fact there are people out there who find what I have to say offensive because it challenges a belief system. It provokes you to think a little bit differently. And if you're one of those people, fucking brilliant. I'm glad that you're at least watching these videos to get somebody else's opinion. If it challenges you and makes you feel uncomfortable, fantastic. And if you get offended, well, that's your own fault. I'm not giving you offense. You're choosing to take offense. Grow the fuck up. Well, there you go, guys. I hope that you enjoyed that, talking about the divorce rate that's going to surge around the world because of the COVID-19 killer virus. So if you like this video, do me a favor, do yourself a favor, and smash that like button because we would love to get these likes up there. Leave me a comment below, and I want to hear your thoughts about what's going to happen in the world. Do you think that your relationship is going to survive the COVID-19 virus and the divorce pandemic that we're about to see? Or do you think that your relationship is going to end in tears? Or are you looking forward to a potential new challenge chapter of your life. So leave a comment below. I would love to hear from you. And as I said before, guys, we are aiming to build up to 10,000 subscribers on this channel by the end of 2020. So smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so that you are notified every single time we are making new content. And you don't want to miss this because not only are we talking about things that are relevant to lockdown, but we are talking about other things as well. And of course, when lockdown finishes, we will be telling you all about our planned shows for 2021. So make sure that you do subscribe and stay tuned. So until next time guys, stay safe, stay happy, or break up. You know, if your ex turns around and says to you, oh, let's still be friends, yeah? Well, that's like a kidnapper saying, let's keep in touch.